is Friday, July 3. Welcome to CGN News. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, is not prepared to give up just yet on the financially burdened airline Liat, even as other shareholder governments have already voted in the favor of its liquidation. The Prime Minister is moving to establish Liat Limited to replace the ailing operation and set aside $20 million to capitalize the company. The Antigua and Barbuda leader said he deeply regretted that shareholders were unable to agree on the importance that Liat has towards regional integration. Liat is also a feeder airline that transports tourists between the countries of the Caribbean. The British Virgin Islands plan to expunge the records of marijuana-related offenses. The Drug Prevention and Misuse Amendment Act offers previously convicted marijuana offenders to have their records wiped clean. However, the criminal record may not be expunged if the marijuana for which the person was charged exceeds the legal amount outlined in the legislation. That amount hasn't yet been specified. Minister of Health Carvin Malone said the amendment is necessary to bring fairness and balance between those who were penalized for using medicinal marijuana and those who are now free to do so under the Licensing Act, which was passed in the House of Assembly earlier this week. New National Vision political leader Fuad Abu Bakr has been granted $75,000 bail. Abu Bakr was arrested during protests in Port of Spain on Monday and has been charged with six offenses. These include obstructing a police officer in the execution of his duty and three counts of assaulting a police officer at the Black Lives Matter protest at the Queen's Park Savannah on June 8. He was also charged with using violent language to provoke persons to commit a breach of the peace and breaching the COVID-19 regulations in Port of Spain. Abu Bakr is the son of the leader of the Jamaat al-Muslimin Imam Yazin Abu Bakr. The group staged an attempted coup d'etat in Trinidad in 1990. Following a reassessment of travel protocols, St. Lucia will introduce several new and updated protocols for arrivals from July 9, 2020. Travelers will be required to obtain a negative PCR polymerized chain reaction test within seven days of travel unless they are arriving from countries in the travel bubble designated by the government of St. Lucia. Visitors traveling only from destinations that have zero or a low instance of COVID-19 cases will be exempt from the seven-day pre-testing requirement. These destinations currently include Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados, Bermuda, Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. Visitors with a travel history from these areas in the last 14 days will also be exempt from quarantine. Finally, all returning St. Lucia citizens and residents are required to quarantine for 14 days at a pre-approved home quarantine address, government-operated quarantine facility, or a COVID-19 certified property. Overseas now, unrest in Ethiopia has already seen more than 80 people killed. The protest surrounds the killing of a popular singer, Hechelu Hondesa, who was shot dead. The singer was a prominent voice in anti-government protests that led to a change in leadership in 2018. Angry protests, including three bomb blasts, followed his death in the capital, Addis Ababa. The singer was buried on Thursday amid tight security. A judge in London says the UK government unequivocally recognizes a opposition leader, Juan Guaido, as Venezuela's president in a battle over gold bullion held at the Bank of England. The case was brought by the Banco Central de Venezuela asking to release $1 billion in gold reserves to help fund the cash-strapped country's response to the coronavirus outbreak. The Bank of England said it was unable to act on instructions because it was caught in the middle of competing claims for the presidency after disputed elections in 2018. The BCV board, appointed by the government of Nicolas Maduro, wants the gold released while a rival ad hoc board appointed by Guaido asked for the release to be denied. Guaido has refused to accept the results of the 2018 elections, calling them flawed and insists that he is interim president pending a fresh vote. 
About 60 countries have since recognized Guaido as Venezuela's leader, including the United States, which has imposed sanctions on Maduro and his inner circle. Israeli billionaire mining investor Dan Gertler has denied that he tried to evade U.S. sanctions in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC. An investigation by the Platform to Protect Whistleblowers in Africa, PPLAAF, and campaign group Global Witness said he used a global money laundering network to get around U.S. sanctions and extract mineral wealth from the DRC. The report by the two rights organizations cited evidence indicating Mr. Gertler had moved millions of dollars through Afriland First Bank's branch in the DRC in order to dodge the sanctions. Gertler appears to have used a money laundering network stretching from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Europe and Israel to evade U.S. sanctions against him, funneling millions of dollars abroad and acquiring new mining assets in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2017, the United States froze all the assets and accounts of Mr. Gertler, a close ally of former DRC President Joseph Kabila, accusing the billionaire of profiting from massive resource corruption in Africa. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, the Democratic Republic of Congo lost more than $1.36 billion between 2010 and 2012 in state revenues from underpriced mining assets sold to offshore companies tied to the billionaire. Tanzania is now officially a middle-income country according to a World Bank's reclassification of world economies. Last year, Tanzania's economy grew by 6.8% in 2019 and 7% in 2018, one of the fastest growth rates in the world. According to analysts, this rate of growth has been going for over a decade and continued after President John Magufuli took office. The country is the second largest economy in the region and now joins Kenya as the second East Africa community member state in the middle income bracket. Apart from lifting millions out of poverty, the real benefit of graduating from the least development country status should become apparent for Tanzania in coming days. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching. Thank you.